Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Once again, I'm Nev from Nestec Fit. Today, I want to be taking a look at this TP-Link AC1300. That's right, Archer T3U+. Plus. This is, well, it seems to be a little USB drive that has a giant antenna on it. Let's open it up and see what's on the inside. Okay, so as we can see here, we got the driver's disc. Always good to have this. Always good to have a little bit of paperwork. And a little USB drive. And one giant antenna. Wow. Okay. This unit claims to be able to send out 867 megabytes a second. Megabits a second. So that comes to about uh, 100 megabytes a second. I definitely don't think I'm going to be able to transfer at that speed. But hey, you know what? We're going to plug this thing in and see if we can get at least 30. If I can transfer at at least 30 megabytes a second, which is one third of what they're reporting right there, then I'll be happy and that'll be just as fast as transferring with the AX band. You see that blue plastic on the inside there? That's how you know it's USB 3.0. Did you know all you have to do is change that color and increase the speed? My guys. All right, time for the moment of truth. Here we have my battle station. And over on the left-hand side right here, that's my Alexandrian backup. I got about 10 terabytes worth of information over there. Over here on the right is my workstation, as always. And I'm gonna be hooking this thing up to my workstation. It's going to be tucked away a little bit, and we'll see the best transfer that I can get from it. All right, I'm pretty happy with those numbers. It kind of bounces between seven and, oh yeah, now it's going to go right down to zero now that I'm talking about it. But it was as low as seven, and it went as high as 30. That's while my server was directly plugged in. So next up, I'm going to disconnect my server from the hard wire and see what it transfers like generally over the network. But I can tell you that I like what I see here with this little USB unit. It might just be my antivirus that cut it down there for a second, uh, the speed anyways. But yeah, 30 megabytes a second on the top, that's uh, not too bad. I, I cannot complain about that. Oh, wow, okay, so that's definitely a dramatic change. <laughs> from about 30, that's about a 10 times change almost. Now, the thing is, my router, excuse the mess, is in that room. If I close the door so that you can't hear the laundry machine, it drops to about three megabytes a second. So this Wi-Fi 5 is definitely not, or sorry, Wi-Fi 6 uh, is definitely really affected by doors, and that is greatly unfortunate. Now, it, uh, it, it still, it works, it works. I could definitely recommend this for standard browsing. It definitely, whoa. Uh, I'm pretty sure when it does that, it's just my antivirus taking over, checking out what I'm transferring. Yeah, so the moral of the story here is definitely don't run your server on Wi-Fi. I'm having a difficult time getting this thing transferred now, but as long as the server is hardwired, I don't get any problems at all. Oh wow, this internal bit is so small. I had such a hard time reading the information that was on that car. But ultimately, we have a Realtek RTL8812BU uh, chip on here. And as you can see, we have manual leads to connect to it. Unfortunately, I smashed them off. I smashed one of them off while I was trying to uh, finesse it out. Mm, didn't do the best job. Now, I was thinking that I could just solder that sucker back on there, but that thing is so small, I don't think I'm going to be able to. I think I'm going to have to reorder one of those connectors, because these connectors are smaller than your average ones, and then re-solder it back onto this main control board. As you can see, you get a little extra Wi-Fi in there, so I think I'm just better off to reorder another one of those cables all together, and I'm probably not going to be able to recrimp that wall. There's the other side for anyone who actually cares. That's what it looks like, but yeah. that's. Uh, I'll need a crimping tool to get that back on, and I'll need a crimping tool for ants. That is unbelievably small. Though it should be said, this still works. It's uh, one banded, but it still works. So, oh yeah, and it should be said that I switched. The, the black was over on the HJ2. It should be noted that the chip had a gob on it to keep it nice and cool, it seems. I doubt they'd keep it there just to keep it in place, not like that thing's gonna go anywhere. So yeah, stuff for the heat. Next up, just for fun, I thought I'd see how fast I could transfer with this thing once I had broken off one of the antennas. And I get about three megabytes a second maximum, so that's an interesting, that's an interesting contrast. Looks like the speed is about uh, 10 times inhibited.
It definitely seems like this is no longer dual band, but it's operating 10 megabits slower than Wi-Fi N would now, so that's kind of fascinating. I just need to get a new antenna for this thing, and we'll be good to go again. So it's definitely a worthwhile USB, I gotta say. Dual band AC, very good stuff. It's not AX, but then again, AX is still in its infancy at the time of this recording, at least for consumers, and they seem to be bypassing it right away, and they're going right for AX, what is it, AXE, something like that? Well, either way, AC still works. AC is fine, and AC is at the top of its game. We've had time to master it, basically. So I don't think you need to skip over this. I think this is a really good USB drive, and I definitely recommend it for anyone that needs it. Um, anyways, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me, Nev from Nez Tech. But it's like and subscribe if I've helped you out here. It's always appreciated, and as always, folks, please take care of each other.